One way of thinking about scales is to think about standards. For example, back in the day, you put a kilo or a pound or whatever it is on one side, then you put the rice on the other side. And as soon as they balance out, that means this equaled this standard. But that kilo, wherever you go, or that pound, wherever you go, is the same exact weight because it follows one exact standard. The same thing happens with measurement, right? A meter is a meter is a meter, wherever you go. Or a foot is a foot is a foot, wherever you go. These are standards. And everything else is measured against standards. That even happens in your studies, doesn't it? The kids that are in school or university students, there's a minimum requirement for you to pass. That's the standard. If you don't meet that minimum standard, you're not going to pass the class. And everybody is judged according to the same exact standard. Similarly, somebody wants to join a team, you know, they want to get into sports, get into the basketball team or the track team or whatever else. There's a minimum standard of athletic ability. You have to go through certain trials. If you're good at this, if you do a minimum of this, if your free throw average is this much or you can finish the, a lap in this much time, then you can move to the next round or move to the next qualifier. These are all standards in life. Everything we do, every time we make a judgment on something, we need standards. Let's take the example of a classroom. You know, there are all kinds of kids in a classroom. I used to teach third grade math a long time ago. All, all manner of children, and some children are very mathematically inclined. They can do the entire multiplication problem in their head. They don't even touch the paper. Other kids are solving three times eight on four pages of paper, and they still can't solve it because it's, it's to them, it's like harder than nuclear physics. It's, it's difficult for them. They're artistically inclined. So not all children are the same. They're not. But the, the curriculum and the educational ministry and you know the Department of Education, they say, well, it doesn't matter whether you're artistically inclined or mathematically inclined, whether you like math or don't like math, you better get a minimum of this score or you're not moving on. So they're all given the same exact standard. Some people, like, you know, we have Arabic students in our program here. Some students came here, they have a lot of knowledge of Arabic already. They know Arabic, maybe they're from an Arabic family. Maybe they studied Arabic before, and some, some don't. So now when I'm teaching a lesson, and other asatis are teaching a lesson, some of them have a much easier time because they have background. Some of them also have an easier time because Allah made Arabic easy for them. I've had students before that I've taught Arabic and after a year of teaching them, I can testify Allah did not create them to learn Arabic. They can learn anything else, but they, just, just not for them. And that's not because they're not intelligent. These are intelligent people that are highly qualified in their professions. They can speak languages, that are, they can write in languages that are not even human. They're programming languages. And yet Arabic, they cannot get make heads or tails of it. They just can't do it. It just doesn't work for them. They are people of different aptitudes. But when it comes to standards, we're all the same. And that kind of seems unfair. Why should... And you know, that student who works extra hard. I'll tell you a true story. One of my students worked extra hard. I mean, this guy, there was not a break that he took a break. In the break, he was doing the work. After school, he was doing the work. And he was friends with me before he was a student. So I would call him and say, hey, you want to go play some basketball? No, I want to study Arabic. Like, but I'm your teacher, and I'm telling you we can play basketball. No, 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 I want to study Arabic. And he failed every test. Every test. And he, and he did not quit. He kept studying, he kept working, he kept working, and he did not do well. He, he barely, did, barely, barely got through. Barely got through. And I can testify that there were students in that same class, in the same year as him, and even future students, that were far better far better at Arabic, and put not even 1% of the work that he put in. According to the academic standard, one receives the certificate, one does not receive the certificate. But in my eyes, I have far more respect for that student than I've ever had for any other student. Because I know the effort he put in. I know the hours he put in. But that standard doesn't really get him a job. That standard is not really very impressive. It's just in my heart for him. He can't really use that anywhere else. He can't say, well, my teacher really appreciated the effort though. I mean, I got an F, but he really respected the work I put in. You should ask him how he feels about me. Nope, that doesn't really help anybody in this world. On Judgment Day, however, these scales are different. Allah will not just look at the quantity of my deed, what I did, what I scored. There's every factor taken into consideration. Every factor. What was I good at? What was I weak at? What did Allah make easy for me? What did Allah make hard for me? And for every one of us, that's a different set of standards, isn't it? Now think about this ayah. فَأَمَّا مَنْ ثَقُلَتْ It's not مِزَانُهُ ثَقُلَ مِزَانُهُ قَالْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ He said, for every single person, for anybody, for whom their scales 
plural, scales, became heavy. One person, many scales. One person, that's not one person, one scale. In the, in the zahir of the ayah, it's one person, m- multiple scales. So why would one person meet, need multiple scales? We could just have one giant scale, put all the deeds on it. But actually you can think of the scales in this ayah as standards. You were given a different life than other people. Your parents are different. The family environment you grew up in is different. Your personality is different. You have a very hard time controlling your temper. Your friend has a really good control over their temper. Your brother is very calm and you're very excitable. Now, you know, if, if Allah made you less capable of controlling your anger, and Allah made your brother or your sister much more calm. So on judgment day, when your brother and you, your, your sibling, who's very calm, is about to be judged, hey, you didn't get angry. Yep, I didn't get angry and they should get rewarded. But you, controlling your anger, was a lot harder for you, wasn't it? That was a lot harder for you. Allah will take whatever you know capacity He gave you, because if they had a 100% threshold for holding their tongue or controlling their temper, and you didn't, and you were about to punch some guy in the face, and all you did was, ah! and that's all you did, by everybody else's standard, you lost your temper. But maybe Allah says, actually, I knew what you were going to do. And in comparison to what I gave you, that's a pretty rewardable deed. You controlled your, you held yourself back. You held yourself back pretty good. People are going to be given different set of standards, different scales. This is so important to learn because you should not be comparing yourself to anybody else. 